My name is Bill Golis. I'm with Coda Bears. This is Lunch and Learn. Welcome. Today we will be going over work queue in the MES uh, user interface. So, yep, let's get started here. We are going to be working today in Kinetic 2023.2, but we are going to be working in the data collection classic environment because I'm not sure they're uh, ready for prime time for this in the, the uh, kinetic interface for MES. For those of you who aren't familiar with MES, it stands for Manufacturing Execution Systems. This is the shop floor interface for Epic. We're going to clock in with a user, and here we are. We're clocked into MES. So from the MES screen, we can see uh, you know, we have a production, a material package control, shipping, receiving, etc. on these tabs on the bottom. Production is what we're going to deal with today and the work queue in particular. So the work queue, it's a list of available job operations by resource group. This is similar to the priority dispatch, uh, which you may currently use, where you print out what operations are available in the order that they're scheduled, hence the priority dispatch. This is a way to do the same type of thing, but online, and it also allows you to you know, quickly see these the active, current, available, and expected operations and clock into multiple jobs at the same time. This is handy in what they call lean environments where you may have work cells and there may be a team of people working on multiple operations simultaneously and then you know reporting quantities as the day goes on. So I'll, let me show you how this works. You always need to select a resource group first. So this is you know where these operations are scheduled and to take place. Uh, we have some ops out here in this training environment under our, our four foot shear. I'll bring that in, that resource group, and it's gonna load up with a active, current, available, and expected. So active would be active work that's there's someone or a uh, the resource already clocked on to an operation here currently and we have nothing active we have a whole bunch of current work 85 items nothing available and one expected so to identify what these mean the active is all active jobs like you know something that's actually currently clocked in current work it's defined as operations that are scheduled for this selected a resource group but have not yet started right but where previous operations have uh are complete so that operations ready to go that would be current work available work are operations that are scheduled for the same resource group where some quantity exists from the previous operation so it's not complete. A four on op, op 20 was displayed. Op 10 would have some pieces done, but not be complete. And expected work are operations where uh, they're scheduled for the resource group, but there but there is no quantities completed on, on the previous operation. All right, so what's available now is current. So we'll take a look at our current work here, and this will show here as a, um, as a grid. Now, a lot of these are past. So we're gonna go here and look at recent stuff. Here are multiple job operations that are current right now that, that we can clock into. Now, and when you select one, you can, you can head to your job details tab, and this is going to show the details here for that operation. That's job 2048, assembly one, sequence 10 for your app. We can select that and start working on it here. We can request material or see documents that are associated prior to us clocking in. So uh, let's say there was a, a print or a picture of the part. We can select for this particular uh, job sequence and operation and select our documents. Uh, there isn't anything associated here, and we can view that right from the MES screen out in the plant without having this printed or you know, this is online. If we need material for this, we can go to a get request, and we see here that, that there is, in fact, uh, yeah, part SS125. They need eight sheets, and it hasn't been delivered yet. So we can go ahead and say, okay, we can request that line, and then that's going to create a, a material request for the material to be moved to this uh, to this particular uh, job operation. And once we've done that, we're going to say, hey, let's actually clock into this. So I'm selected here on the job details. I can also be here on the on the row here for, for a current work. If I'm current work, I can select start activity. Or from job details, I, I can select select for work. Either does the same thing. Once you do that, it's going to pull up a window that's going to ask you, are you going to do setup or production on this particular operation? We're going to say production. Once I select that, now a BJ Smith is clocked in. And you can't see it yet. If I close this, there's the there is the, I, the job that we selected, 2048, assembly one, op 10, and we are currently doing production on that. 
and back to the work queue, I want to show you how we can see active and select multiples at the same time. So we're going to go back. You always have to pick a resource group. I'm going to select the same one that we had, which is that sheer four foot. Now we can see we have a, some active work because that's the one that we're currently clocked into. So when I look at active, here's that job 2048. And we can actually report our completion from here. Let's go ahead and show you that. If I select the line, I can scroll across here and we have a labor quantity, a scrap quantity, and a scrap reason. So we have 800 pieces to run. Let's say that we ran 100 pieces to complete it, and we've got five pieces that are scrap, and we're going to identify the reason for the scrap. This is planned scrap, and then we're going to say end activity. Now, I read from the work queue that activity has ended. If I close out, and we'll see it's gone here. So as you may know, you can end the activity one line at a time from, from this interface here, but from the work queue, you can do it multiple lines, and you can do them the same thing as from the standard a front interface. Let's go back and show multiples here. We're going to search again to get our resource group. We're going to use the same one again the end of this year. Let's go ahead to our current work, and let's say because we're in a work cell, and we're going to clock on to all three operations here for three different jobs. They're all you know, being assembled at the same time and by our team. I selected those three. I'm going to start activity, all production. It's the first article. <laughs> figures. Uh, let me just go ahead and we will select production. Good. So now all three of those are currently running. If I close out to see, we have all three of those are active production operations now. And we just, from one click with the multi-select, we were able to get those all started at the same time. We could here, as typically done, select one, go to end activity, put in our, our completed material, our scrap quantity, non-conform, and one at a time. But from the work queue, we can execute these all at once. So if I go to my, again, you always have to select your resource group. We bring in our resource group again. We can see that, that we have three for active work. So I can go ahead and let's make this a little bit larger here. So it's the end of the day. We're going to report all three of these at once for our work cell. So I'm going to, I can select one at a time, or I can just go select all to be quick. I'm going to say, okay, for here, and we completed uh, this one, 300 are done. Here there was there was 88 left. We did 50 of them. Here we have 75. We completed 25 of those. And let's report scrap for for here for two pieces. And we always have to have our reason. We'll say that's going to be we had a million defect, and then all those at once. I should be able to end activity, and boom, all done at once. Once I close that, they're all done, and we reported all of those. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to show you was the on the get request. Let's go back to our work queue. Let's go ahead and bring up our, our resource group. Let's select one of our current work here. Select the bottom one here. And we're going to go to our job details. And we're going to say get request. So here, there's a stock to material. We need two and a half pieces. Okay, so we're going to say, okay, process that request. This creates a material queue request. And so if this would pop up on the material queue, so a material handler could go look for today and say, hey, what do I need to deliver where? And once you retrieve that, there is the one that we just did, SS125 for, for eight sheets. So we're able to request the material, uh, clock in and out of multiple operations at the same time, as well as view any documents associated with those job operations all online with no paper uh, from an MES screen. And that is the material cube. Thank you all for being here. Have a great day.